Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Aaron. I'm Josh. Thanks for joining us today. We have uh, two pairs of glasses here that are samples we've drawn from a big old pool full of head-to-head -head matchups, and they could be almost anything. We're running uncut today, mm -hmm. just giving you straight through our opinions and reactions to both of these glasses because we are more of a reaction channel than a review channel because we don't know what we're drinking. We so all we can do is react to it. And we think that gives you the most honest opinions possible. Yep. So a lot of these matchups are things that are available versus things that are allocated or inexpensive things versus more expensive things to see if the allocated and the expensive stuff is really worth tracking down or not. But Sorry. sometimes we've got curveball matchups in here to keep us on our toes. If you like that sort of content, I'd recommend subscribing to the channel. We don't always run uncut like this, but Sometimes it's kind of fun to do it. You yeah. get to see the whole process start to finish with no edits. When I smell the glass too early and have a reaction. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. It smells <laughs> strong. It singed the nostrils a bit. Man. It smells very good. Like it smells. You would. <laughs> what does that mean? Because it smells like a really dilly rye. Does it? Yeah. I don't get dill. How do you smell dill? That smells like a jar of pickles. Oh, I love that. I love that for us. <sighs> I hate that. I'm not a pickle guy. Oh, it's, it's so strong though. Like, Are you, real quick, in the comments below, it is very strong. In the comments below, let us know, are you team pickles or team olives? I'm a team olives you guy. You can be both. You could be both. People like olives and pickles. I don't. You don't. You can do team both. He likes olives. I like pickles. He does not like and pickles then, and I do not like olives. And then the little one around here likes them both. Yeah. So in the Venn diagram of our family, we've got one of each. But if you're team olives, put it down there. Team pickles, put it down there. Or team both. Yeah. Want to know. Yeah. So. All right. This is strong. It smells super sweet, though, to me. Like, yeah. there's underneath all the alcohol burn, there's, like, a very distinct sweetness. And I can't <laughs> get past the burn long enough to figure out what kind of sweetness. So let's taste it. As, as that uh, dill pickle note kind of dissipates on the nose after I spend some time with yeah. it, underneath that, that sweetness you're getting, yeah. I'm getting that as like a sugary spearmint, like a double mint gum. I can see that, I think, now that it's tamed down a bit. Yeah, and just a fair bit of vanilla. It smells like a rye. It smells like a pretty decent rye, but a very rye forward smells rye. Smells good to me. Let's get it on the palate. Oh, wow. It's very peachy. Like those peach... Gummy thingies. Peach rings? Peach rings, yeah. The gummy peach rings? It's like an alcohol version of that. So if you had those and it was just injected with booze. I think I was looking for more on the palate based on how prominent the nose was. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm gonna give it the old swirl job here and I do try to get it to open up a little I bit. I do think the power is on the nose. The yeah. power kind of lessens on the palate. It doesn't seem as strong as you would think it would taste. By the way. If you see how just fast this glass is swirling, just lightning speed. I can't do that. If you like these glasses and you want these, you got a nice heft to them. They're a little bigger than Glenn's and they've got a lot more heft than a Glenn Karen does. These are linked in the video description below or our shop is linked in the video description below where yeah. you can get these glasses, this tasting board, shirts like this, mm -hmm. Aaron's cozy corner stuff, good yeah. gift holiday uh, stuff over there. Yeah. yeah. I do want to say these are very like on the bottom. They're pretty heavy weighted, which if you're used to holding a Glen is a little bit weird to get used to, but I do like the weight on the bottom of these. And you know what they say? Fat bottom girls make the rock and world go round. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So All right. if you like that, right, these queen. are the glasses for you. I do love some queen though. Yeah, second sip on the first glass glass for me brought out more oak, as it usually does for mm -hmm. us. And that's kind of the only thing that changed. Yeah. I'm not getting... Uh, this does seem to be a rye to me, but I'm not getting a lot of the, like, the spice sensation on the palate. I'm not getting the Pop Rocks effervescent thing. I'm getting like a mintiness on the finish. Yeah. So it kind of is a little bit sweet, like the peach rings up front. And then on the finish, it's good, like a winter mint gum, mm -hmm. you know, after you've chewed some of it and there's like that cooling sensation. Yeah. That's what I'm getting on the, on the finish. Yeah. I actually do like that. Yeah. Quite I, a bit. I do too. Let's get into the second glass and see how it compares. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just get some air into this. I'll say the color on this one looks real nice. This does not smell the same. It smells different. Oh, this smells deeper. Mm. Like the, the, this is like the deep end of the pool. It doesn't, I'm not saying it smells like a pool. 
I'm just saying you've waded into the deep end of the flavors. It smells like the wood is darker. Yeah. I know it's not, but like, yeah. it, you can picture what that would smell like. That's what this smells like in comparison to this one. Ooh, I like this. This is like you honey, would. honey, sweet, sweet oak. A little bit of that um, cooling sensation, like if you chew gum and you breathe in. Mm -hmm. When I smell this, I kind of get that cooling sensation in my nostrils. So it's kind of like there's where the mint's coming in. There's okay. where the mint's coming in. There's where it's <laughs> coming in. Y'all get that? Yes. Mint's coming around the holler down there. <laughs> Can we yeah. drink it yet? Let's get into it. Okay. And now that we're uncut, you get to see our full sipping process where everybody has their own methodology. But for me, I don't really do the Kentucky chew. I call it the Tennessee tumble because we're here in Nashville. But I kind of do a little roll around so that it coats everything in my mouth before I swallow. And then I don't I, know what you do. I you don't just know. probably just throw it down the hatch. I drink it however I feel in the moment. Yeah. I will say that this has more impact on the palate than the first glass. Really? But it's brighter too. I was thinking I it was less impactful, maybe more, but I don't like the flavors that are there as much. I think that's a fair point. There's not as much flavor, honestly. It's I need another sip. Brighter, that that minty, there's kind of like an herbal mint type of thing going on here. Mm-hmm. That's wow. forward. It's almost a medicinal cherry note as well that's coming through. I'm getting some dryingness on the palate. Yeah, I see you there. Which I don't always love. Sometimes I could be in the mood for it more than other times. And today is not that time. So, oh yeah, we're doing this uncut. We are. Oh, so man. we got to run it live. Okay. I've got a I've got a good bead right now on what I prefer. And I think I prefer the palate on one and the nose on two. And... Finish wise, I'll probably give it to the first class, at least on first impressions. But typically we take a break right here. Typically I take a lot of time sitting here with my eyes closed, taking sips back and forth while Erin watches, you know, whatever Instagram reels on her phone or family Snapchats or whatever she does. And then you tell me to be quiet because you're concentrating. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we always try to clear our palates out with some water and start with the second glass and yep. go back to the first because the order in which you taste things can absolutely mm -hmm. affect your impressions of them. So the first glass was really good. We both liked it. Getting into the second glass after that, it might not have got a fair shake. So we're going to give it that fair shake right now. Yeah. What do you think? Um, It's fine. It's not bad. It's kind of drying and I just don't like that. And I'm not picking out any specific flavors. It, it tastes like I would expect whiskey to taste, but it's not concentrated flavors. It's very light on the flavor. Like if the flavor knobs were turned, they'd be turned down. Yeah. And I'm just getting like a drying, a drying sensation on my tongue. Um, coming back to the second glass after clearing my palate, it definitely doesn't seem as bright, but I'm still getting the medicinal cherry. I'm still getting the, mm. I see your drying oak on it. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting a lot of rice spice on it either, but I am getting that winter green spearmint type of cooling sensation. I'm getting it, but like ever so slightly. Again, everything is just turned down to like minimum volume. Yeah. Or you could still, like it's still there, but you could like, it's, it's so faint that it's almost annoying. <laughs> we are having two different experiences in that regard because for me, I am getting a lot of flavor on it. It's a different flavor than the first class, but I'm getting a, a very equal experience between the two, at least in regards to their impact on the palate. They just go about their business in a slightly different way, but both of them are equally as effective mm -hmm. in my opinion. So normally during this time when we're not recording, we're not speaking to each other or to the camera. Right. So this is unusual. And I'm also going to have to be like, I might need you to stop talking so I can think. Well, I, I Isn't that talk. weird how I'm asking you that? You're normally asking me that. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to let a bunch of dead air go by. I know. I get that. So coming back to the nose on glass one after starting with glass two. Wow. It is. It's got a big nose on it. Yeah. And I'm speaking from experience here. I like your nose. Yeah. I I have I have thoughts and opinions and an answer. Man. Um, this is almost like a Danish, like a 
or like a some kind of like breakfasty. Yeah, I like everything that Glass One is presenting. I can see how some people would hate it though. It's it's got some peach vibes to it. It's got some like minty like mm -hmm. wintergreen mint vibes to it. It does. Which if you hate those things, I could see how this is a very divisive pour. But I really enjoy this. I I enjoy how they play like with each other. The balance of them is good. And then in comparison to glass two, I just think it's a better well-crafted drink. I enjoy drinking it more. So I'm gonna go thumbs up on glass one and just okay on glass two. Man, I'm really in a rock and hard, between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. I'm in a rock, in a hard place. <laughs> Literally on the yeah. inside of a boulder. I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> Different, you're mixing Wait. metaphors. You're doing mime stuff Wait. with a phone booth. What's the Austin Powers one? Nothing. That's uh, Anchorman. Anchorman's in a glass case of emotion. Right. Okay, so what's Austin Powers? I have no clue. I can't remember that. Austin Powers I watched Powers Austin Powers something. when I was a teenager and haven't watched them since. Okay. I, do they hold up? Let us know in the comments below. Does Austin Powers hold up in adulthood? I feel like it wouldn't. I, like I was trying to do Austin Powers, but I said the line from Anchorman. It's okay. I know. I, oh, I kind of remember what you're talking about mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I also haven't watched it since high school, so that's why it's a, like something about being in a box or something. Yeah. Maybe he's just like, ah, I'm in a box. Yeah. Maybe it's just that simple. I made it too complicated. But As, I said I was in. I was in a rock. But I am between a rock and a hard place because I do. I'm coming back to glass one, and I'm getting that dilly sensation that I don't really love. But there is a lot to like in there. So mm. I think on glass one, um, I think I'm going to go thumbs up on both of these, actually. Okay. Soft thumbs up on both of these. I think if you're sensitive to a dill note in any whiskey, I'd probably avoid glass one. And I'm saying all this before we find out what these are. Uh, I think the second glass, if you're sensitive to like more of those like herbal and herbaceous notes, I would lean away from glass two. Mm -hmm. But I do like both of these a fair bit. Yeah. I mean, glass two is not bad. I just think I prefer glass one so much more that to me it it got docked. Sorry. I would say if you don't like dill notes, I would avoid glass one. If you don't like that medicinal cherry note, I would avoid glass two. And I'm pretty sensitive to that <coughs> note. Excuse me. I'm not getting that. Okay. Oh man, breathing is dangerous, y'all. Terrible time to be doing uncut. You I know, I'm so sorry. Out. But uh, the second glass to me, I'm very sensitive to that um, medicinal cherry note, and this isn't. If I if it reminds me of cherry cough syrup, I just don't want to drink it. Like mm. uh, you drink that when you're sick as a kid, yeah. And like I don't want that flavor. But even though it does lean a little medicinal. It's still enjoyable. So okay. um, I'll go soft thumbs up on both of them. Your thumbs up on glass one, just okay on glass two. Mm -hmm. Let's find out the price and see if that changes how we feel okay. before we find out what we're drinking. So glass number one is number seven in our pool. $55. I'm happy. I feel like that's a good quality for 55 bucks. Because I like the flavors in this. And I, again, I want to reiterate that not everyone will. I know this, but it is up my flavor alley. I'm going to give it two thumbs up. Wow. For the price, I feel like that's a great price and this I enjoy rare. it. I enjoy it that much where I feel like you feel like the value is really high. For me, it is okay. because I enjoy the flavors. Yeah. I can see how some people would hate this. And if you're new here, Erin places a really high value on value, mm -hmm. which is how you get two thumbs up from her. I place a very high value on the flavor and I'm willing to pay more for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't care how good the value is. If the flavor is not right, I'm not going two thumbs up. But your two thumbs up. I'm going to stay thumbs up on glass one. What's okay. the price on glass number two, number eight? $200. I'm Excuse me? Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am? I know. I had to double check to make sure like I was looking at them in the correct order that you were holding them. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. To me, I'm going to go on record as saying oh. this does not taste like $200 whiskey to me. I, I want more flavor. Oops, I just locked my phone. I want more something. Whatever is in this glass for that price needs to be turned up. Turned up. I see it. Tasting it, I see it. It's probably age or something like that. Yeah. I don't really want to pay it. I'm going to go down to just okay on glass number two. Your thumbs down on glass two, I'm taking it. Yeah. So you're two thumbs up on glass one and you're 
thumbs down on glass two. Yeah. That's as wide apart as we could get. Yeah. If we had two thumbs down, would you go two thumbs down on glass two? No, it's not bad. It's okay. not bad whiskey. I did enjoy drinking it, but I would absolutely not pay that for it for that. Okay. I like it and I I don't think it drinks like super special whiskey and I would want to for 200 bucks I would want it to drink like super special whiskey. Yeah, that's There's probably a, probably a reason it costs that much and we're about to find out why. Um I don't I, I think glass 1 is a reasonable substitute. I'm not going to say that it's mm. it tastes exactly the same because it doesn't. It's a different flavor profile. Yeah. But like the overall experience, it's not like the experience on glass two with the with the finish and the mouthfeel and all that stuff. Glass one is equal to glass two and all those metrics to me. Mm, not to me. I'm I'm going to respectfully disagree with you, sir. Okay. Let's, I do not think they are comparable for each other. Let's find out what we're drinking. Okay. Glass number one, your favorite. Number seven. Bullet twelve year rye. Oh. Wait, oh. what? What's glass number two? Michter's 10-year rye. These are both 92 proof. The Michter's is 92.8. A lot of things are making sense to me right the now. The bullet is thanks to Joe Carter, and the Michter's is thanks to Justin Williams. Oh, man. So, a lot of things are making sense to me right now. I'm getting all the Michter stuff confused. I like the Michter's toasted barrel rye a lot. And the barrel strength rye. And the barrel strength rye, but I don't think I've historically liked the 10-year... We've as not, much as people, like I, the, the couple times I've had it. Right? So we've not had it a lot. I'm so confused. We've not had it a lot. We've only had it a few times here and there. Um, and generally speaking, I do like it more than you. Yeah. Which bared out here. Yeah. And also, neither of us really like it for the price point. Yeah. So I get it now. The $200 that you're paying is because it's a rare product that does have some age on it. Mm. So all that stuff adds up, but it didn't blow us away right here. Yeah. And. No. Uh, the first glass, Bullet 12 Year Rye, being the type of product that is it's MGP sourced from, Indi like from Indiana. And I got that dill note. It's definitely on profile. And once I got past that, I got that vanilla. So these are both probably very close in age. I mean, the Bullet 12 Year is stated at 12 years. Yeah. The Michter's is stated at 10. Michter's is kind of well known for putting older whiskey in their 10 year age statement. Than what is stated, yeah. Yeah. Um, question about the bullet. Is mm -hmm. that a special thing or do they always have like a 12 year around? So it is, it's on the shelf fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe five years ago or something, they released a, a big batch of 12 year and it was really good. Okay. And then it went away, it was gone. And now this, this most recent batch, like the bottles right over there in that closet. So this is a recent 12 year. Yeah. Okay. This is from the recent 12 year run. Um, and it's out there in a lot of stores. Okay. So, so they release it periodically. So it's not like, um, it is, a, it's kind of special, but it's not. They have not indicated that it is special at all. It just seems like a product that they're going to put out on the market. But a special meaning that they don't always have it. They don't always produce it. Don't know. Okay. Uh, right now it's everywhere and it's been everywhere for months. So okay. it, it could be a regular release product. And this is, this is the whiskey game. Sometimes you find something you really like and like bullet 12 year, five years ago, and then it just disappears for five years. And you're like, hey, where was that thing that I really like? Yeah. And then sometimes it's on the shelf for months and you can just go grab it. So, okay. wow. Very interesting here. I mean, I feel like this checks out, at least for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like this tracks. Yeah. I mean, the Michter's, the, the Michter's is good, but it's not any better than the bullet necessarily it's really to your personal preference i would not say that they're the same though i think the bullet's 92 proof they're both 92 proof and this and the mixtures is 92.8 so. yes i did say that yeah that i mean close and proof close in age slightly different flavor profiles very similar experiences you're literally just paying for the name i did not have the same ex similar experience but okay their own. you've you've said that a couple times now and let's let's unpack it real quick because this matters for viewers okay to me why are you saying they're so different to me experience? i was there were flavors here i'm not talking about the flavor profile but i'm talking me, about the experience the experience i was overcome with flavors like in my palate the experience was an enjoyable experience okay. this left me want, wanting more like this was like eh, but you don't think the finish and the mouthfeel and the impact on the palate. And there was the, no impact on the palate. And the level of flavors were the same on both of these? No, absolutely not. Really? I think this had a wow. lower level of flavors. This had less impact on my palate than this one. Absolutely. Okay. 127%. <laughs> okay. 
You know, look, I'm married to this woman, so I know when she's a she says 127 percent, she means it <laughs> because that's the number she always goes to. I don't know why she picked that. I don't number. know why either. I know when I'm texting people and I try to type 100 percent, somehow I always type 109 <laughs> percent, and I have to go back and fix it, and it drives me nuts. You should just leave it. I'm just gonna start leaving it. I'm I just think gonna you you're, if you text me ever, if you're watching this and you're you know one of the people that have my number. You're going to get 109% from now on. I love it. So, I'm here for it. Let's do it. To, this is interesting because we're drinking the same things and having different experiences. Because mm -hmm. I think these are lockstep in experience with each other. It's just a different flavor profile. And I don't think the Mictors is necessarily worth all that much more unless you're just willing to pay for the rarity. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful bottle. The bullet's fine looking as far as the bottle goes. Yeah. It's not going to impress anybody. The Mictors is, is a little bit more impressive looking. And it's a more rare bottle. So if you want a more rare bottle to kind of impress anybody with, um, Which, I think the makers will get it done. Anyway? Just be you. Uh, it's nice. It's nice to share stuff that if you had a bottle and you wanted to share it with friends or family, it's nice to be able to give them that experience that they've never been able to have. Yeah, sharing There's, sharing is different than impressing, though. Right. I don't. I'm not buying bo bottles to impress people. I'm not saying impress. You know what I mean? Do I? When I say impress, I mean share with people who have not tried it before that okay. you're hanging out with, and that's special. But if yeah. if I'm buying it to drink by myself. To the point of the whole thing of saying just okay, if I'm buying it to drink by myself, I'm probably going to take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to buy it to share with guests, I'll probably take it. Okay. So just okay is take it or leave I it. I will not. I'd buy the Mictor's Toasted Barrel <laughs> over the oh, Mictor's yeah. 10-year. Well, and that's why we don't have uh, one of these. And we have two Mictor's Toasted Barrels and one Mictor's Barrel Stream because we prefer those over the the 10-year ride. Yeah. So very interesting head-to-head. I got to shout out Joe and Jess for the bullet. I got to shout out Justin Williams for the mixers. Also have to shout out. I think uh, I said that, but. I have to shout out Tyler Boggs for the idea to put these two against each other. Oh. He was like, you should do this matchup if you had the bottles. And I was like, well, we've got the bullet, but because we have that from Joe and Jess. But it's like, I know Justin has a bottle. So. He graciously gave us yep. a sample. Yes. Absolutely. So tons of fun. Hopefully you learned something from this or glean something from this. Yeah. If you like these unbiased completely honest reviews. I mean, we can't be anything but that because we don't know what we're drinking. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Yeah. We'd love to have you on board and it gets more of this content in your inbox or your YouTube feed or wherever you get your stuff. And it's a ton of fun. We're always dispelling hype like this or we're confirming hype if something if, warrants it. If it warrants it, Which yeah. is kind of rare, to be honest. It happens. Yeah, so we do videos like this all the time. You can get on board. And you can also check out our Patreon community if you want to get on board with good people who like good whiskey. Yeah. The benefits of you joining are that you get access to our Discord. And if you get plugged in and you get active over there, people are swapping samples and they're helping people find bottles. Like, I just don't even have to go to the store anymore. Yeah. I just hit up the Discord if I want something. Or people are just like, hey, I'm in a store. They've got six of these bottles. I'm here for five minutes. Does anybody want one? And you hop on it. And we're all helping each other out. So yeah. it's a wonderful thing. That's where we release our barrel picks. We do bonus content, bonus live streams, um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. We do some giveaways from time, time to time. So yeah, check that out down there in the video description. And you'll also find a link to these, again, super swirlable glasses, shirts like this, Aaron's Cozy Corner, yes. candles for the holiday season, all kinds of stuff. You can check that out in the video description. Absolutely. That's yeah. it for today. Be good to each other. And until next time, cheers. Cheers. Tyler was spot on with this matchup. What did he say? Like, what was his reasoning for putting it together? He was just, you know, he said they're both around the same age and around the same proof. I think it'd make a good matchup. Yeah. And it's interesting because they, to me, they hit complete different. Like, yeah. Although I wasn't trying to, like the proof wise, they both kind of felt the same. Well, I mean, we, everybody saw it play out, but like I did prefer the Mictors slightly. Yeah. Just because of that dilly note in the in the bullet which i really like which you really like but you preferred the bullet over the mictors yeah so like why in the world would you spend you could get four of these for I'm one not, of these no way i'm not gonna get no so your ratings hold true you would buy one of these for sure now having tasted it mm -hmm. blind mm -hmm. and you would state thumbs down you just pass. I would pass if there was a mictors actually you know what the last time uh i was in our local store uh and this was oh, a long time ago it's fine uh I went in and they had a Mictor's 10 year ride and they offered it to me for 185 bucks. You passed? And I passed and I felt guilty because I was like, I should have bought it. Mm, don't Be, feel guilty. No, I should have bought it 
to make it available to somebody in our community. Mm. But like the budget was tapped, and Checks out. yeah, <laughs> what's new there, right? <laughs> but I was just like, oh, I gotta pass on it. It's okay. I gotta pass Don't on it. Don't feel bad. But I mean, I, it is a take it or leave it bottle for me. So yeah. very interesting matchup. This is fun. Yeah, you're fun. You're fun. Your mom's fun. She is very fun. <laughs> It's call back to the blooper reel if you're still oh, watching this. Oh, the very first video yeah. call back. That was a good time. Yep. My check hair out, was a lot shorter. Check out the blooper reel. Just go to our videos uh, and sort by oldest and check the blooper reel out. It's a it's a blast. It's, it's, a, it's a gas. We were still learning how to do YouTube and uh, I'll leave all this in, but we were still learning <laughs> how to do YouTube okay. and we were very uncomfortable in front of the camera. So check that out. And we did a lot of practice videos that never saw the light of day except for snippets of them yep. in that blooper, blooper reel. There you go. Okay, bye. Be good and take care of each other.